All right, what's going on? John Zanis here, Taylor Kyles there, uh, CLNS Media's film analyst and, of course, uh, Next Gen Stats uh, researcher, uh, working for the NFL, covering all the big games uh, and breaking down all the film. And that's what Taylor did with the Patriots game here. Uh, Patriots, uh, big moral victory against the Green Bay Packers, went on the road. Love those. <laughs> oh, you love the moral. I can't, can't wait for the moral victory parade. Um, but look, it's real. Down to a third string quarterback. Um, Brian Hoyer was hurt. We have to assume going into this week, and again, we don't know, Bill Belichick could trot out Mac Jones once again and uh, try to fool us into thinking he's playing. I think that's unlikely. I think Brian Hoyer, given the fact that, you know, he has a head injury and the climate surrounding that situation right now, in addition to probably not having the benefit of any practice this week, likely not to play, which means that you're looking at another Bailey Zappi game. Uh, the question is this. There's two questions, and we'll start with the first one. Uh, what was your overall vibe after you got a chance to look at the film? Because, again, you look at the result and you say, wow, Bailey Zappi hung in there with the Patriots uh, on the road at Green Bay against one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, and they almost pulled out a victory. Uh, but now that you got a chance to look at the film, how do you think Zappi actually performed relative to, again, what was what he was asked to do, uh, the plays that he made, the plays that he could have made, did he leave stuff on the table? Mm -hmm. What was your overall impression? Yeah, so he was really thrust into a tough spot. Obviously, the circumstance of you don't really think you're going to play. He did get some practice reps before, but I'm sure he didn't think he was actually going to be going into the game. Obviously, an extremely tough environment against a future Hall of Fame passer. But on top of that, the Patriots were giving up a lot of pressure. Um, Rashawn Gary, I think Isaiah Wynn's getting a lot of heat. Uh, it's, you know, it's deserved. I'm not going to say, you know, but get Gary, off the guy's back. Like, Gary's he had good. two bad penalties. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Rashawn Gary is a very good player. They didn't give Isaiah Wynn help. Isaiah Wynn's usually not a guy who needs help. You know, he, he for all that you say about him, he's not a guy who really gets beat very often, especially when he's pass blocking. But yeah, Rashawn Gary gave him a run for his money, and that was pretty fair. Uh, so besides that, I know Cole Strange, who had a very good day overall. He got knocked back once for a sack. Um, you know, everybody had, other than Isaiah, when he had a few losses, everybody on the line had about one loss other than Mike Dunlap, who has been fantastic. So Zappi was not only dealing with the tough circumstance, but he was under siege the entire game. Now, I thought he looked good on the play action passes, which were the only times the offense really looked functional. Uh, obviously, the touchdown to Devontae Parker was a very good pass. Uh, you know, sucked up the defense. He had the clear out route. It was not the highest difficulty throw. Um, then he had another one to Aguilar, which, you know, that was one where if you nitpick, if that ball hits Aguilar in stride, it's a touchdown. He could get around that. Yep. Exactly. And, now he, flo and, and he floated it. And it might have been some nerves there because he's like, oh, right. my God, he's wide open. I got to make sure I at least hit him. And so you really, you know, you don't zip it. But, yeah, you're right. That that was a touchdown. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, and, and again, the guy was getting spooked. Um, there were times where uh, he had pressure in his face, and there was the one time where he did a 360 spin in the pocket that kind of reminded me of Jimmy Garoppolo, where you're like, all right, this kid is really, you know, he's, he's hanging on back there. So I think there were definitely plays that were left on the field. There were a couple crossing routes to Aguilar, also one to Hunter Henry that I thought could have been completed that he seemed to miss because of pressure rather than standing in the pocket. Um, which was a little different than what we saw in the preseason from him. Now, you know, it was clearly a much lower level of difficulty. But at the same time, you saw him kind of handle pressure a lot better in those circumstances and make more downfield passes. Um, and he just looked more consistent overall, which is partially encouraging because, again, much higher degree of difficulty when you're playing starters in the NFL. But at the same time, you at least see, okay, he can handle pressure appropriately. He doesn't make a lot of bad mistakes which is the biggest thing right now um although i would say his pocket presence was really bad at times there were a couple sacks he took where he didn't seem to have any idea that there was anybody coming and there were other times where he did feel pressure and then it, he didn't really look confident in finding his escape hatch um that the line was giving to him he he did a few times he found his check downs most of his completions were either check downs or screens um, which is partially, you know, you want him to be confident. You don't want to give him a lot of high difficulty throws in that situation. But at the same time, it clearly hindered the offense. So you hope with the full week of practice, they can put together a plan that he specifically is comfortable with. You know, when he gets the reps, he'll, he'll gain more confidence and know what it's like to throw these different guys, what his strengths are relative to each receiver. Um, so I would say not terribly encouraging, 
watching the film back. <laughs> um, just very honest. But he's also a fourth round pick who, which is fine. Like you said, shouldn't have been starting in the first. We're place. not grading on a curve, and it's not relative to expectations. We're now just simply saying, how did he do? We, uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, all of those caveats are true. But again, it's. I think everything that he did could have been done by almost any quarterback i think a lot of this was replacement level sort of stuff uh right. and he didn't do anything necessarily to elevate or make any plays but as you mm-hmm. said the most important thing is not uh make mistakes however mm-hmm. the pocket presence and i know that one sack win gets beat or someone got beat on a, on a on a speed rush on the right side mm-hmm. uh and that's coming right at him he's got a sense that it's not a blind side hit uh didn't right. see it at all didn't feel it didn't step up in the pocket so there definitely were some moments there but again you factor in the nerves and the week of prep. There's a million reasons for why. The question is, is there enough encouraging here? Because this is this is where we are now. It's the same Cam Newton, Jared Stidham situation. Nobody believed in Jared Stidham, but they all knew mm-hmm. what Cam Newton can do, and they were all set with that. Um, let's see something new. What if the kids got, got lightning in a bottle sort of thing? Um, and uh, that's what they want to see, the new thing. They want, you know, they, they get it. Old and busted, you know, new hotness. They want the new hotness. Um, yeah. But uh, who are they better with? Uh, if, if Brian Hoyer were able to play uh, and had a full week of prep and so did Bailey Zappi, uh, who would you rather have in there for the Patriots? Let's say this Mac thing is longer than, than we think, three and four and five weeks, and Hoyer is available. Who are you rolling with? I mean, Hoyer 100%. I will admit that when Mac first sustained his injury, I was kind of on the team of how long is it till we see Zappy? And I will completely admit that was a lot of PTSD from that Chiefs game in 2018 where, you know, just Hoyer made a lot of mistakes that you're thinking a veteran uh, backup cannot be making. It's literally minimize mistakes, take care of the football, be mindful of the clock, all those things. We even saw Zappy, you know, almost got called for consecutive delay of games. I think he got called for two anyway in the game. Should have, should um, have right. gotten called for another. Yeah. Instead, he got his first career touchdown. Yeah. Um, and was the first rookie to throw a touchdown. So, uh, you know, I would definitely prefer Hoyer. I thought Hoyer looked pretty good, um, especially there was that one play where he threw the uh, angle route to Ramondre Stevenson out of the backfield where there was a deeper route to the left side to the three receivers where I thought he could have thrown it out, but he saw that there was going to be quick pressure inside and knew, all right, I got to get it out quickly. Not sure if that was his first read anyway, but you saw that Brian Hoyer has experience and, you know, was very calm back there. And that's the difference. Honestly, when they signed garrett gilbert today there was part of me that thought maybe garrett's the one who plays just because he has started games before he's been in the league a while he has experience with the patriots now yes they overhauled their offensive system uh but at the same time we've seen literal school teachers with experience in the nfl be called in from their classrooms to play games and you know at the end of the day when you've been in the nfl long enough especially in different systems football's football it's much easier to pick up the terminology especially for the Patriots, I figure, who spent the entire offseason trying to streamline their terminology and make it easier for guys to pick up on. Yeah. Um, and I, 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 you know, my instinct was, uh, yes, and so Brian Hoyer, I think, would be uh, the better starter. Um, and I think even if we see Zappi, you know, if he shows those nerves early, if he makes some kind of turnover or one of those egregious plays early, we could see Gilbert. Um, but, you know, I, I would be more than happy to see Zappi, you know, flip a switch, uh, take command and, you know, give you replacement level, but not replacement level for someone who is still adjusting to the NFL to a dramatic scale to what you saw against Green Bay. No doubt. And but see, here's a here's a hang up with Hoyer. And this is where it's difficult. And again, we have a very small snapshot here uh, on what you would expect with him as a starter because he played only a few minutes. But, you know, the reality is this. Uh, Bailey Zappi would be lucky to have a career as, uh, as good as Brian Hoyer's uh, Absolutely. over the course of his thing. So I, I don't know. I don't, there's really not a ceiling associated with Zappi uh, based on his physical profile, where he was drafted. Mm-hmm. I mean, historically you're picked in that round as a quarterback. Chances are you're not even signing a second deal. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. that's the reality uh, from that position. Doesn't mean you, there aren't success stories coming out of there, but it's difficult. And there's a reason why. Um and also Hoyer, important to remember Hoyer was undrafted as well. So yeah, you know, Hoyer, Hoyer's undrafted. He's a true success story. He, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So he's a he's a he's a success story. This is a guy who's started in the NFL, who's won games in the NFL. The problem though is 
which Brian Hoyer are you getting? Because the reality is Brian Hoyer hasn't really played many meaningful snaps since 2017. Um, mm. So that's a very long time. You have no idea if the Brian Hoyer you think you're getting, who would have been someone from back then, the steady, reliable veteran backup, uh, exists anymore. So that is the bit of a crapshoot. Personally, I think the safe bet is Hoyer with a leash, um, which is – you know, I mean, kind of like what happened in that Kansas City game. You bring him out there, and if it's like, oh boy, I don't like this at all, uh, yeah. then you move on. Otherwise, I, I think it's got to be Hoyer over over Zappy, even though that's going to disappoint some people. And I think it's important to remember who Brian Hoyer was throwing to when he last started in that KC game. He was throwing to Nikhil Harry, to Mir Bird, like not really guys that. Yep. It's, at least in this roster, you have much better talent. You know, you got a bunch of guys rotating in a receiver because you got a lot of talent there. Obviously, tight end, if John Ellen misses a lot of time, that's a really big loss. Um, he seemed to be comfortable with Hunter Henry. Um, I thought that, you know, the one throw that he actually attempted to him, the only reason it was an anchor was because he was about to get hit. Um, so I think there's a lot more talent. The offensive line has been fantastic for the most part. Uh, so I think that Hoyer has more to work with. And I also think that there are situations where you would at least trust Brian Hoyer to throw, make the right decision, convert on – you know, the, the situations where we saw the Patriots run where normally you would expect them to pass, but I don't think anybody was expecting them to because this is, again, it's Bailey Zappi and you got a great offensive line. You got a great backfield, but at least Hoyer gives you the ability to keep the playbook much more open. If you need to start going downfield to catch up or whatever, I'm much more confident in Brian Hoyer than I would be in Bailey Zappi at this point. All right. You mentioned the offensive line uh, a couple of times here, and I think that's super important to talk about because, again, while I'm not, uh, you know, Mr. Bang the Drum moral victory guy because I think this was a game you could have won and possibly should have won uh, given the fact that Green Bay just kind of laid it out there for you, and you didn't, and that's uh, – tough because these wins aren't necessarily easy to come by particularly with a backup quarterback you still have to look at some of the positives and that's what we'll look at um you know uh moving forward here first we want to tell you briefly about uh one of our sponsors athletic greens um if you haven't tried it already give it a shot uh it's 75 high quality vitamins minerals whole food sourced ingredients probiotics help you start your day right uh supports gut health your nervous system your immune system energy recovery focus and aging and again if you care about your health you're probably reaching and you know on the shelf and grabbing a bunch of different supplements different bottles different things uh this is just one stop shopping it's 3 bucks a day uh it, and that's really all you have to do uh, to get all of the vitamins and everything that you need uh, to get your body right. Lifestyle friendly, diet friendly, doesn't matter what diet you're on, virtually no sugar. Um, millions, I'm not going to say millions, thousands and thousands of uh, testimonials, five-star reviews, professional athletes, uh, leading health experts, celebrities. So right now is the time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, just one scoop and a cup of water every day, and that's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health, to make it easy for you. We're going to give you one free, I'm sorry, a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is, there's the URL on the screen, uh, athleticgreens.com slash garden. Once again, athleticgreens.com slash garden. Garden, take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Taylor, let's talk about the offensive line. Uh, this is something that was the reason uh, that people gave for how uh, slow the offense got started but in the preseason uh, in the beginning of the regular season. Uh, it was a real concern. Uh, and I'm not going to say everything's cleaned up, but there's certainly things that are trending up. Uh, you know, first and foremost, just the way that they play, they won that game in the trenches. Uh, mm -hmm. They did. And they really imposed their will uh, uh, running. They did some of the outside zone stuff that we haven't seen a lot of, and they mm -hmm. were really able to get out and, and, and get it going. You could see Trent Brown's motor was running. You could see strange was pulling and those guys were out in front uh, and they were just pancaking dudes and they were having a good time running. They yeah. averaged more than five yards of carry. That's good. That bully ball sort of stuff. When you have this limited offense here without Mac playing and while you're still getting to know you know some of the people around him uh you need it uh looking at the film again your overall thought on both the offensive line we know they blocked well in the run game a couple pass protection issues but overall how much different is this unit than they were even a couple of weeks ago 
I think the biggest thing is one Trent Brown. You know, we had the uh, miscues in the first two or possibly three games. I believe it was the first two um, that obviously were egregious and ended up, you know, resulting in some big hits on Mac Jones that were just not acceptable. Trent Brown physically has been dominant all year. Like he's he's not giving up sacks because guys are beating him. He's still a wall freak athlete for a guy his size. But for him, a lot of the mental stuff has been cleared up, which has been a big help. Um, and then, again, Isaiah Wynn had a bad game against a fantastic pass rusher. I don't think that he's going to lose his job to Cannon. I think part of Cannon coming in was the fact that they said, we are going to run this ball down their throat. And Cannon next to Onwenu was not fair at all. Like, when they were comboing on gap runs, I mean, they were literally moving people to the second level consistently, and it didn't look very difficult. Big dudes, big dudes, man. Yeah, two, yeah. 335, 340 pounders, like, just massive. Then you got yeah. Cole Strange coming around, like we said, Cohen. Um, so, David Andrews, I thought, also had a very good game. Um, he's been a little inconsistent, but, you know, he's an older guy, and he's not quite as athletic as he used to be. Yeah. Not somebody ever want to slander. He's a great leader. He's still a very good player. Um, but I thought he had one of his better games. I thought it was Cole Strange's best day. Yep. Uh, personally, yeah. And pass protection, he only had one loss where he got walked back by a very good player in 94, Dean Lowry. But besides that, I mean, he was great against Kenny Clark. He picked up stunts very well. Now, the, the Packers sent a lot of really nasty stunts at them where, you know, usually what you'll see is maybe a twist where one player goes in, then someone goes behind him or what's called a pirate stunt, which is one of the more complex ones where you have two guys going in one direction, and then you have somebody looping all the way around. But what we were seeing from the Packers was both things at the same time, you know, two guys jumping multiple gaps where Belichick, I remember he had a quote a year or two ago where he mentioned, like, if it's a passing situation and we're living in third and 10 and we're taking sacks, that's not on the offensive line. You can't expect them to be picking up stunts. And, you know, if the pass rush knows what's coming, it's their job as NFL defenders to capitalize and to punish you. And I thought the Patriots did a really good job. Now, to that point, they were also in a lot of third and long situations. I believe they only had two or three third downs. Um, where they didn't have to get more than eight yards, had a handful of third and 10 plus situations where, again, it's difficult because you got the young quarterback and, you know, you're not really going to live in third and annual situations when you're relying on screens and runs because defenses are very smart, especially this Packers defense. Um, so they were in a lot of tough spots. But overall, I mean, considering that situation, I thought the pass protection was very good. Uh, the run blocking, like we said, was great. I mean, the outside zone stuff. We saw more of that than we've seen in all the other games combined. They used it, I believe, 11 times, hadn't used it more than three times in the game before that. And a big part of it was that rather than the shotgun heavy stuff that Mac has started to adapt because that's what he did in college, the Patriots knew, okay, we have to use play action to get our backups some easier throws. That's not quite as easy when you're doing it from the shotgun. So they did a lot more under center stuff to set up play action. And by doing that, they said, okay, outside zone is something you typically want to run under center. Because when you're in the shotgun, the running back usually has to take a more stiff angle right across. And it's hard to say, okay, I found the hole, plant, and then attack it the way that you can when you're going at an angle from under center. So I thought they were doing a great job at it. Uh, most of them were behind Trent Brown and Cole Strange. And I think that did work to their detriment at the end of the game. Because their last run was a play where Preston Smith and I believe the defensive tackle next game both crashed inside. Because they've been, again, Trent Brown literally flexed in Preston Smith's face and then told the sidelines to run it again. So, I mean, the Patriots were rolling and the Packers, like I said, they're a smart defense. So they capitalized on a tendency that they had picked up on and they were able to get into the backfield and really can't blame the offensive line. That was just a great play by the defense. But at the, by the same token, if that's Brian Hoyer in the game, you're not running on third down. You might not even be running on second down. You know, that's he's someone where you can at least say, okay, Check it down, you know, take the throws that they give you and just dink and dunk this ball down the field. I'm not sure if Zappi can do that consistently yet. So, uh, sorry, I got a little distracted there. But overall, I mean, no. really, really impressive day from the offensive line. But that's the thing is, you know, you're looking to kind of stack things together and hopefully – kind of hold the line and this is why i think the win was so vital is at mm -hmm. two and two you feel pretty good and you've given yourself some margin for error you're one and three if you don't want to call last week a must win game this week's a must win game you don't mm -hmm. want to go one and four and again there's some there are winnable games on the schedule even with a reduced roster here if you can you know put some things together if the mm -hmm. offensive line was the biggest concern and you have that working for you and then you start to get everything else right and you get mac back 
you could be looking at an overall different team uh, because at mm-hmm. least you get to see what they could do if they were functioning properly. And we really haven't right. gotten to see it because the O line was out of sync and everything was a mess in the first couple of games. Then Matt got hurt. Um, and, uh, and, and, uh, and that kind of, you know, threw that whole thing uh, out of, uh, out of whack. So right. definitely positive signs from the offensive line. Uh, mm-hmm. Other positive from this game before we put a bow on it was uh, Jack Jones. Uh, oh, yeah. And oh, so yeah. again, it's so amazing here uh, because, you know, you lose JC Jackson in free agency and you put in Jalen Mills and you're like, is he really a number one corner? And all through training camp, he absolutely looked like a number one corner. I know mm-hmm. the groin's probably been hampering him and he hasn't been as effective during the season. Um, mm-hmm. So he's been a little off, but he looks the part uh, and he was out. So after that, you had no idea where they were going to go in terms mm-hmm. of uh, defensive backs. We talked last week about John Jones being kicked outside and being terrific. Uh, mm-hmm. And now you've got Jack Jones uh, stepping in here uh, and not just, hanging in there looking like a, like a really dynamic uh and and, and w- more than capable uh player as a fourth round pick here um you know you start talking about potential steals here and the people are really raving about uh you know everything he's a really confident guy but raving about just his quickness and his closing speed and his and uh, mm-hmm. his feet and how how agile he is uh getting a chance to watch him uh out there you know playing and again taking a benefit of having looked at the film what did you see I saw the same player that I expected them to get when they drafted him, honestly. Yeah. If you look back at what I said when they got him, I was like, this guy reminds me of J.C. Jackson. And I would not put that on a rookie if I thought it was unfair. You know me. I, I try to protect those guys. But, I mean, the swagger one, like the, the, the passion that he shows on the field, the way he electrifies everybody else, you can tell it matters to him. And he really does see himself as a receiver. And that was something that showed in the preseason. I, I put a whole uh, compilation together on Twitter where you can see his first target, he jumped the pass, he jumped an out route, which he said was disrespectful to yeah. throw on him. Because even you look at Brady, like back in the old days, he loves those quick out routes against single high safeties because usually the corner is going to give those up because you don't want to get beat deep. But Jones knows he's fast enough that if he gets beat, he can at least recover. And he's athletic enough and flexible enough he can recognize it, get in position, and it's not usually detrimental. And we saw that where he actually almost – he tried to jump an out route earlier to Lazard. It was the one where Lazard ended up carrying him a few yards and he couldn't bring him down. But then he got his revenge, and you saw it on the – it was the screenplay, I believe, the Dobbs, where he just shot right downhill, took the ball, and then recovered it as well. Like, that dude really does think he's an offensive player – And it's something you can tell invigorates the team, which is one of the best things. That's what J.C. Jackson did. Like, how many times did J.C. make a play, change the momentum of the game, the whole defense is hyped up, it motivates the offense, you see the turnover turn into a score, things like that. Um, And also, it's Aaron Rodgers. You know, the play is what it is, but that's that's no small feat, especially considering how he doesn't throw interceptions. Right. Exactly, exactly. So it shows how smart Jack Jones is. Now, grain of salt here as well. There was a play where he wasn't targeted, where he was a little aggressive, and he did get beat deep. Now, I think there are going to be growing pains for sure, where he learns what he can and can't do in the NFL, and coaches will make sure that they're on point with that, and if he can either take the coaching, you know, learn from mistakes if he makes them and move on and progress, or, you know, you start seeing teams pick on him and take advantage, you know, we'll see how that shakes out. Another little grain of salt was the fact the Packers started to specifically attack him in the run game. And it wasn't looking pretty, to be very honest, which is why I actually predicted that Jack Jones would be the first uh, rookie to start. I didn't expect Tyquan Thornton to be as good as he was, and I'm sure if he wasn't hurt, he would have been first. But Jack Jones showed that he had the skill, he had the intelligence and all those things. But not only just his size, I think, you know, he got carried by bigger receivers when trying to tackle him in college. But the biggest thing has been tackling angles, where sometimes he's a tick late or he tries to fire really quickly downhill. And it it was a really bad one on a bubble screen against the Dolphins where you saw him just take a horrible angle and they went right around him for a first down in a big game. So there's definitely things he's got to improve. I thought initially that it would go the J.C. Jackson route where for the first three or four years of J.C.'s, not three or four, but I think it was two or three years of J.C.'s career, he was only really going in on passing situations and they would put Jason McCourty in 
because Jason McCourty, obviously fantastic tackler, really good cover guy, not as athletic and not as much of a playmaker as JC was, but he was consistent in all phases of the game because JC wasn't a consistent tackler and he wasn't very good in the run game. Took him until his second or uh, second to last or final season in New England before he was that full-time starter where the team felt comfortable keeping him out there on every play. Yeah. I think that if Jalen Mills can get healthy, that's the plan that they would go with. I would also love to see if Jalen Mills gets back healthy, them doing that and bumping John Jones back into the slot. Uh, because I think Miles Bryant is a solid player. I think he's got good ball skills. He's tough. He's strong. He is not supposed to be in man coverage consistently against slot receivers. Yeah. He's just not dynamic. You like him as your you like him as your sixth D back out there or something like that, but you're but right. In you that role want... that you see in Adrian Phillips, you yeah. know where you'll see him in those passing situations. He starts high and then he drops down to get those crossing routes, yeah. but to read the quarterback and jump the throws. Right. That's where Miles Bryant does well. Get him at depth so he doesn't have to chase guys down. You know, he's a really strong guy. Uh, he's tough. He can lay the wood if you give him a head of steam, but you don't want him against guys like Alan Lazard and, you know, some of the quicker, twitchier guys because he's just not a dynamic athlete. Whereas I think if you put Jalen Mills, who's healthy, Jack Jones outside, if John Jones in the slot had some even tougher uh, defense to pass against, and they've already been pretty tough to throw on. Like Miles Bryant may be a liability, but he's not the kind of guy who's also going to miss the tackle in turn, you know, the 15 yard gain into something bigger. Although he obviously was exposed late in the game where the little errors he made, or if they happened in the first quarter, you probably forget about, okay, he got, you know, he led up a first down on third down to Randall Cobb or he had the pass interference, but at the end of the game, worst case scenario, and right. he looks like the bad guy. So um, yeah, I, I think th- Cornerbacks are already solid. I'm not trying to poo-poo Miles Bryant. No, he's not doing poorly. You can just do better. And the team clearly isn't comfortable enough with Marcus Jones to put him in there. As much as I love them to complete the trifecta with all three Joneses, I've been saying it since they were drafted, but, you know, Belichick knows better than we do. There's a chance. But, yeah, Jack Jones. Again, to, uh, a couple things pointing up. You mentioned Jack Jones, your first rookie to start, um, if Tyquan Thornton hadn't gotten hurt. Um mm-hmm. This could be Tyquan Thornton week. We don't know. Um, Practice opens up this week. He is eligible to come off short-term IR. They could start the clock on him, start practicing. You have to assume when Thornton begins practicing, he'll probably play that week, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, or soon after, because he's not talking about an injury. You got to work your way back from, he's just talking about getting it. You're talking about getting, you know, conditioning or whatever, but it's Mm -hmm. really once it's healed, then he can play once he right. good enough to practice. He's probably good enough to play. So it could happen. It also could be a week or two. You don't really know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this to me was the biggest bummer of the season uh, because we were so infatuated, uh, went to training camp several times. You couldn't take your eyes off Taekwon Thornton. And it wasn't because he was spectacular. It's because everything was so clean, just the way mm-hmm. he moved, the way he ran uh, the, you, the, it was like easy speed. I'm going to take like, you know, Dennis Eckersley, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, announcer for the Red Sox. He's retiring this year. He has a phrase called easy cheese, which means a fastball that all of a sudden gets up there and you have new, you're, you're like, you look at the gun and you're like that was a hundred uh Tyquan Thornton's got that easy speed he just goes yeah. uh but on top of that his cuts were sharp uh he was able to get off the line it, well, you were worried about the physicality but he was so so quick off the line he was able to get releases uh and his hands he caught everything that was thrown his way mm-hmm. he was just and and you just couldn't wait to see like what are you going to do with this new toy did we finally hit on a receiver and then he gets hurt um how exciting is the possibility that he could join this offense and add a different dynamic? And again, I don't know what kind of dynamic a player like him adds when you're talking about Bailey Zappi as your quarterback, right. but um, <laughs> there's only so much you can do, but still you're talking about another gear that the offense doesn't currently have. Absolutely. And he's one of those guys where like, yes, he's obviously fast, but as you touch on the quickness is there and the best thing that I, the, Part about Tyquan Thornton that excites me the most, obviously the physical skill sets there. A lot of guys in the NFL with great skill sets who don't even see the field. Tyquan really works hard to improve, and he's very conscious of what he doesn't do well. I believe his second to last year in college, he was criticized a lot for not coming down with contested catches. And he worked on that. And it was a legitimate criticism when he was, I don't know, when he graduated, whether it was a junior or senior. But his second to last year, it was a legitimate criticism. And then it turned out once he was getting once he was going through the whole draft circuit, that was just speculation because he was catching everything. 
And people were acknowledging, if you watch this kid, he works on it. And you see significant improvement in him every year that he was in college. And when you hear him speak, he clearly is a student of the game. He has a fantastic attention to detail. And that's what you want from a rookie quarterback or from a rookie wide receiver who you expect to take the field early, especially in a group of veterans who've already proven themselves in the NFL, you know, in some capacity. They still have to prove themselves in this offense. I think Nelson Aguilar is doing a great job. Devontae Parker is still flashing. You can see what happens with Mac. Be Kendrick Bourne, please. Uh, but, you know, Tyquan Thornton comes. I, I think he takes more of Humphreys. A role because we saw him a lot in the box, but you wouldn't expect from a guy with Tyquan Thornton's frame, but he's tough as hell. He's one of those Florida boys. Those Florida boys don't mess around. Like they got a, you know, they got a different mentality where they may be a little slight, but it's the edge that puts them over the top. So it's very exciting. Not only can he be that deep threat, but he can be the guy who separates with quickness and then uses that speed to turn, you know, the five yard slant into a 40 yard gain, if not a house call. So it's obviously it's exciting and in the receiver you also would hope that you could rely on more consistently and someone who would have a more solid role than pretty much anyone not named Aguilar or Jacoby Myers. You know, everybody else seems to be more spot contributors, but you know, second round receiver, he's gonna be getting his touches. And again, I think the plan, just the way things were trending in camp, was not only for him to I there was some thought because of his slight frame, um, that he could be one of those, you know, fake medical red shirt sort of situations. Foxborough <laughs> flu, you know, conjure an injury and let him kind of grow in the system for a year, get a little bit bigger, get a little stronger. And and then look what he does in year two. I don't, that's not what they were doing with him. They were, and the fact that he did get hurt and he went on short term IR, they want this guy to play. Um, and I think they yeah. really were enamored by what they saw. So this is another potentially exciting thing, which we might not actually see the full potential of it um, right out of the gate, but it's definitely something to get excited about going forward. Um, last thing to talk about is a little bit, you know, looking back and a little looking forward, uh, a certain you know, downside of the of the game and the loss to Green Bay, the linebacker play uh, was uh, mm-hmm. less than stellar. And the Patriots went out and did what they do almost every time they have concerns with their linebacker linebacking core, which is sign Jamie Collins. Um, so Jamie <laughs> Col- <laughs> Jamie Collins is back again. Um, and it, the sport his, jersey number. <laughs> his career is so interesting because if you look at his, some people have home and away splits. You know, uh, J- mm. Jamie has <laughs> hats and everybody else splits for oh. some reason. And Trent Brown's kind of one of those guys too. They unlock yeah. the best version of him here. Jamie mm. Collins is the his. I think his PFF grade here. As a Patriot is 80 something and his PFF grade everywhere else for whatever stock you put into those is like 58 or something. It's two different guys. Uh, what is it? What is it about here that makes him play better? Uh, and also, will he help again at this stage in his career, uh, you know, based on based on what they have and what they need? Well, I think one thing is coaching. You know, it's not like he's been on a t- he was on the Browns and then he was on the Lion. So it's not like he's been on a bunch of stellar teams that like couldn't figure out how to use him. It wasn't on very good defenses. And I think it exacerbated some of his weaknesses. The Patriots know exactly how to use him. So Mac Wilson got benched very early on because he was very slow to diagnose. Uh, throughout the past few weeks, he's been easily handled against the run. Doesn't hasn't been tackling very well. Guys have been dragging him. And he's been a liability. You know, he has he's had some plays in coverage, but he's very much a niche role kind of player. And then Jamie gives you that physicality inside that you can put next to Bentley if you're playing A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones, where you can rely on at least one person being able to bring him down. I thought Jelani Tabai actually had one of his better games as an off-ball linebacker. But when they dropped him down in the line of scrimmage, and you've seen this, he's tough. He tries very hard, but he's just not a very big guy. So better offensive linemen and, you know, some of the bigger tight ends can move him and they can, you know, get him out of the picture. Jamie also gives you that edge presence where he's not really going to get bullied. He is athletic and he's fast, but he's also very big. You know, he's still 250 pounds, which I think would be the biggest linebacker not named Juwan Bentley in the linebacker core. But he also still gives you that speed. And you can always upgrade over uh, over Collins because he still has sometimes he can still be a tick late to diagnose. I don't think he necessarily freelances, but there are definitely times where, you know, I I would not call him a liability, but 
you'd think that if he can get, you know, a draft, a, a good draft pick or, you know, a good veteran who's young and can develop, then maybe you could just get more return for your value. But I like the pickup. I thought they really needed it. I thought they were going to get another edge defender before Dietrich Wise broke out because I didn't love the depth there. Um, so I think this will at least give Mac Wilson an opportunity to play more roles that he's better at. Uh, Raekwon McMillan, I think he was doing solid. He definitely had his hiccups as well. I think he's also dealing with an injury. So that's pretty significant. I'm excited to see what he can do once he's more comfortable in the system and he's operating at full strength. Uh, but for now, I think Bentley and Collins is a very good interior linebacking core on early downs for you. So there you have it. Jamie Collins is back. Most likely Bailey Zappi is in. Uh, Patriots did sign a quarterback, as we mentioned, uh, but this is a, a warm body. It really feels like it's the Zappy show this week, and who knows for how much longer. We will have a lot more preview material later on in the week as uh, Taylor digs into the Lions a little bit. A really interesting team, a fun team. Uh, I mean, score a ton, give up a ton. Uh, it has the makings <laughs> of an entertaining game. Uh, like the 2011 Patriots. <laughs> it's fun, man. It's a fun. They're, they're, they're a hoot to watch. Their games have been wild. So uh, this could be a fun one in Foxborough. Uh, we'll dig into the Lions uh, a little bit and have some more clarity on who's in, who's out uh, this week, later in the week, once the Patriots hit practice. Once again, remind you all at home to get down with your athletic greens if you haven't already. Uh, check it out. Uh, again, see the URL on the screen, athleticgreens.com slash garden. Uh, free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs of this terrific supplement, one-stop shopping, 75 vitamins and minerals, and just one little scoop. Pour it in a cup of water, and you are good to go. You don't have to worry about a zillion different supplements to take care of your health and take care of your body. Um, so, Check out Athletic Greens. Uh, thanks again to Taylor Kyles. I'm John Zanis, and we will catch up with you guys later.